What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 7 of the Quantopian series. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is taking the factor that we validated and uh, trading against it in an actual algorithm. So just like that notebook that we ran through, this is the, the, the same kind of webinar from uh, Jamie. Also had the attached algorithm and this is an even less modified version of that algorithm. Basically the pipeline is the only thing that we changed if I recall right. So again, I'm just gonna be running through basically uh, the algorithm that was pretty much his, but I also, th I, I like the algorithm in the, in the sense that it, it, it works really well with going from or the research environment directly into an algorithm with like almost no changes. So I, there's no way I could have written anything any, any better anyways. So anyway, again, just credit where it's due. So, um, so, so what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to keep this up so I can copy and paste the pipeline, but what we're going to do first is, you know, you go to my code algorithms and we're going to do a new algorithm and we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, alpha factor strat. Awesome. Okay. So we're starting with a whole bunch of information in here and let's see my rebalance will keep handled data. Um, my record vowels is probably fine to have in there. I don't think we're going to need handled data because we're going to just balance. All we're doing is balancing every day. Um, I don't think we're going to assign any weights before trading start. We'll keep that pipeline. We'll keep and initialize. We'll keep. Okay. So first of all, the algorithm from Jamie also incorporated some differences. So, uh, let me pull that. Oh, shoot. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I do want to just talk about them just because, uh, let's see, let's do just source code. So some of the things that they uh, bring in here are from the event investor. So is announced as an acquisition target or, um, also business days since any events. Uh, and then also you have this data set here, which gives you business days until the next earnings announcement and then business days since the previous earnings announcement. And these have been shown to obviously impact price when they announce quarterly earnings, for example. Uh, so it can be useful to not trade around these times. And there are also strategies that can be really good at specifically trading around these times. So um, at least from what I've seen, you can almost like basically make a strat, like one strategy that purely avoids these times. And then when these times get close, you, 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 uh, start up a different strategy and, and through combining the two do really well. Anyway, I just wanted to bring it up that these, these things do exist. So if you want to avoid earnings, you want to avoid, Hey, was this company recently announced as an acquisition target? You, you can, um, but I'm, I'm going to leave those out. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So coming over to our alpha factor, we need, yes, attach pipeline. We've imported pipeline. Uh, we got the queue. This is the 500 us. We're going to bring in the 1500 us. And then we're also going to bring in sentiment. So, um, from quanto quantopian dot pipeline dot data dot sent dex import sentiment. And now we're going to get to the initialize. Uh, in fact, let's, uh, let me pull this over here and then zoom in a little bit. Let's not take it too crazy now. Okay. And in initialize, basically we're going to schedule a function for the rebalance every day, one hour after that's totally fine. Same thing at market close for the actual recording, the values. That's not a problem. Uh, attaching the pipeline, the, Basically, we're going to do make pipeline. We can call that my pipeline. So we're going to keep that. Um, and then coming down here, make pipeline. Uh, we're going to, hmm. We're, let's just change. Well, actually, let's copy and paste just so we can be as certain as possible we're doing the same thing. So I'm going to copy, come over here, and paste. OK. So it's basically our same pipeline. Now I'm going to do one more thing because I want to show both. Cause like, I think this is the proper strategy to go with, but because we tested on the whole quantiles thing, it's, it can be useful to also track the quantiles. So let's do, um, let's say sentiment underscore 
quantiles. That's going to be equal to the sentiment underscore factor dot rank. So we're going to rank. We're going to spell factor right. <laughs> and then we're going to rank them. Mask will be a uh, universe. And then the method of ranking we'll use is average. And then we're going to say dot quantiles two. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to separate all these stocks into two quantiles, which is what happened here, right? Two quantiles. And that supposedly on average had some alpha, maybe not a lot of alpha, but it had some alpha. So coming back over here, um, cool. We'll, the rest of the stuff we'll just re retain. So then we come down to the before trading start. Again, context output stays the same. Context.security list, that doesn't need to change either. So we're just going to keep that. Uh, and then we're going to get to the actual rebalancing and the recording of variables. So the rebalancing is where the trading is going to happen. And again, this is pretty much all the way up to this point. We, we've pretty much worked off of the defaults or code we already wrote. Now, as we get into rebalance, this is going to be the actual kind of strategy logic that we're going to work with. So first we're going to say the, we're going to say the long securities is equal to context output, context output. Um, and then we're looking for context output for the where context dot output is our longs and then dot index. So that just gives us a list of the long securities. And then we're going to say long underscore weight is equal to 0 0.5. So basically half divided by the len of our long securities. So again, um, for the record, Jamie's code. But what's happening here is here we just get the index. So the index is like the ticker. So uh, let's see if I can find output. So basically every day, so this printed out because we, we were questioning for like many, many days, but when you're doing a rebalance every day, your index will just be like this, like your tickers. And then the data you have access to will be these columns here. So anyway, long weight, uh, 0 0.5 divided by len of uh, the assets. So, okay. So then what we're going to say is uh, coming down here, we're going to do the same thing for the, for going do, short. So short securities. And in fact, let me just copy, paste. We'll change this to short securities, short weight. Don't forget to fix this, I suppose. Short. And then shorts. Is that right? Shorts? Yes. Okay. So here we have basically the weights and the security. So the weights will be basically, because well, we're going to order basically a target percentage. So the target percentage right away, this strategy is going to be perfectly balanced all of the time. Half of your investment money will be going towards longing, half of it short. So that way it's pretty much always going to have hopefully a near zero beta because you're almost perfectly evenly um, spread across longs and shorts of the market. So that's just a really good way to keep beta as low as possible without really putting too much thought into it. So now what we're going to say is we're just going to iterate through our longs. So for security, security and long securities, we're going to say uh, if data dot can trade that, if we can trade that security, what do we want to do? Uh, we're going to order underscore target percent that security and then short weights. So that'll be like the percentage. And that's all we need to do there. Now we're going to go ahead and just take this copy, come down here, paste, and then we'll do the same thing for short securities. So short securities, data contrary security, or whatever, short weights. Uh, oh, why do we say, sh that's weird, long weight. Long weight, wow, that was going to be an error. Long wait, short wait. Okay, let's look through this one more time before we screw this up. Long sex, security, security, long wait, short wait. Okay, cool. So, 
Um, and in fact, this needs to be minus 0 0.5. Okay, so there's that. And then now, if for whatever reason, this strategy is not in our securities anymore, what we need to do is get out of them. So for security in context, let me just, I'm not running over my head here, context dot portfolio dot positions. So for security in our positions, if data dot can underscore trade that security and that secur security is not in long securities and security not in short securities, then what we want to do is order target percent security zero. Okay. One last look over for security in context. Uh, before, so the positions that we have, if data dot can trade, uh, and also let's go ahead and we'll come here. We'll go into the APIs. Okay, so yeah, so we're, we're just checking to make sure that that uh, that ticker actually exists. And if not, uh, obviously, <laughs> we don't trade on it. Coming back over here. Um, if we can trade it and the security not in long securities and security not in short securities. Okay, we ordered target zero. Okay, now what we're going to do is in the record vars, we're just going to graph this stuff. So again, we're going to say long count is equal to zero and then we're going to say uh, short count equals zero. I'm going to make some space here. For the position in context dot portfolio dot positions dot iter values if the position dot amount is basically if this is greater than zero we're longing this company so we're going to say long underscore count plus equals one and then uh, L if the position dot amount is less than zero, that means we're shorting it. And we're gonna say short count plus equals one. Okay. And oh, at this point we need to record this. So we're gonna say record. And here we'll say um, long count equals, oh no, let's not do that. <laughs> let's say, yeah, we'll do num longs equals long count, num shorts equals short count. And as always, we want to track leverage. So leverage equals context.account.leverage. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that is all we need. Let's see if we run into any walls. So first we'll just uh, zoom out so I can see the, cool. Uh, so Syntax data does not start in 2011. It starts sometime in 2013. We're gonna go with June. Or actually, no, we're, what did we decide? We were gonna do 2015, sorry. So it starts in June 2012 is the best uh, date that you'd probably wanna start with, but let's do the 2015 market neutral time. So uh, then we'll go to 2016, January 1st, okay. Let's run this. Now, a couple things to note. One is uh, if you want to be a part of the Q fund, rather than starting with a million dollars, start with $10 million. Also, this strategy currently will be using the default commissions. And uh, it can be wise to test without any kind of friction at all to see if there's anything there and then add in commission. And then that way you can actually... Um, because the adding in commission, especially if you're trading a lot, it's gonna just, it'll kill you right away. So first you kinda wanna see if there's anything there. Uh, and then if there is something there, then go ahead and uh, add in commission and then start thinking about, okay, how do we deal with this, this fact of commission? Uh, okay, so it looks like it is indeed running. I think I have hit some errors like along the way while this runs. And that just for the record, if your if your strategy crashes while it runs, 
uh, you're disqualified from any contest. You're and then also, you know, if your strategy was live, that would be a problem. And then also if, um, I'm not sure in the Q fund what would happen if it if it crashes, honestly. I assume they'd probably pull it back up. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I guess I'll just let this kind of like run through. But I'm going to pull up the um, a bunch of back tests that I ran and, and kind of go over the, the major differences between the back tests. Uh, so I'm going to, I'll pause this, I guess, while this is, well, everyone's probably sitting through this. So <laughs> I don't know. We can just kind of keep running that, I suppose. It's almost done anyway. So as you can see, as the market goes up, we, we did very poorly because we're, we're shorting half of these companies and we're wrong so often because remember the mean of the alpha was in our favor, but it was not much in our favor, <laughs> right? Okay. So in this case, we didn't do so hot. So now what we're going to do is real quickly, I'm going to go, let's see, back. Oh, not for this one. Let's see the back test I ran here. Cool. Let's see if I can go back to, so I ran three back tests. Strangely enough, this was the first one that should have been identical to the one I just ran from f the year 2015 to 20. I'm not really sure why we got a different return there, but anyway, either way, we're not doing that great. Oh, maybe because of the commission. Right. So in this one, the commission is sent, set to 0 0.001, whereas the one we just ran was default commission. So that's like the default commission if you had a personal interactive brokers account. So probably you would want to remove commission just to see if there's something there or, you know, you can put it here in the webinar, at least, uh, I th the commission was set to 0 0.001. Uh, where were we? Oh, I guess I just left. So let's go back to the back test. Okay. So with that commission, this is what we got. Um, our, you know, beta is basically zero. Um, our sharp is not the greatest total returns 1.7. So a max drawdown of, uh, negative 1.3 is not that great. <laughs> anyway, going to the other back tests. Um, this was with actually, sorry, let me point out one more thing. So view the code of this back test. This was actually with the quantile. So I commented out this make pipeline here in here. The quantiles, rather than being based on sentiment, were based on quantiles. So here, okay. So shorts were the zeroth quantile, the smallest quantile, and then longs were the largest quantile. And the way we made them was this line here. We made the quantiles, but the other strategy, we, we didn't run quantiles. We actually ran the other way. Um, okay, so this is with these quantiles. That's the return. Now the next algorithm, I'm gonna go back to the back tests. Um, I changed here. I want to look at the thing first. Let's do view code. Um, same commission. Only here, uh, we're going off of those, the actual signals themselves rather than quantiles. And here we do a lot better than we did in that previous one. And then here, I'm not certain what the, oh, this is a, a very long back test. So this is from, um, yeah, 612 for the Centex start data all the way to basically as far as I could go at the time. So Centex data will take you back up to one month ago. So rolling one month ago. So this is this is basically a test against all of that time. And again, let's look at view code here for the commissions. We're using the 0 0.001. If we used default commissions, we'll, we'll have sunk the ship almost certain. We'll be probably like down here, like minus 25 or something. So um, so with lower commissions, uh, you, we can see there is like we were saying before, there's alpha here, but we've got to do something about where we're losing money, especially on those shorts. Cause overall the market is, is, is bullish. You, you, you can't be so wrong on those shorts. So probably a stop loss, something like that. Now, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this back test and then we're going to go back to the research environment and run the back test through PyFolio, which will give us a little bit more interesting information on uh, the back test itself. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.